Good day everyone. Um, I'm Mohamed Sadri. Partial reconfiguration or dynamic function exchange with Zinc Ultrascale Plus Part 2. Vivado project. This is where we start looking at the Vivado project and Vivado design flow for partial reconfiguration. This is a hobby video, doesn't have anything to do with Xilinx. And these videos are in parts supported by Blickfeld GmbH company. This is a company here in Munich. They create low cost automotive leaders. If you have ideas how to use leaders, then you can simply purchase a leader and implement your ideas. Or if you like some embedded design work or optics work or microelectronics, then you can join the company. They are always hiring. What I want to do for looking at the Vivado design flow, I want to start with a Vivado project in which we assume there is no partial reconfiguration. So we put all of the IP blocks that we need for our tasks in the design. We make all of them to be present all the time. Then we start updating this Vivado project and we update it to a project which is suitable for partial reconfiguration flow. So here is basically a block diagram of our system, the system that we want to implement on our FPGA fabric. Basically in our design, we will have six IPs. One IP which performs multiply on the stream of data that comes and then returns back the results to the DMA. So I should have another arrow here. Another IP which performs to the power basically gets all of these numbers on the stream of data and calculates that number to the power um, of basically four and then returns back the result. Then we have another IP which calculates the reciprocal of double precision floating point numbers, double precision numbers that it receives over the XI stream and returns back the result. Then we have another IP which calculates the natural logarithm of all of the double precision numbers which are received over the XI stream interface and then returns back the result. Then we have another IP. This one is not a stream, XI stream IP. It's a IP with a XI memory mapped light interface. And this, the operation of the IP is very simple. Whenever you read a specific register inside the IP, a counter will increment. So basically it will show you how many number of times you have read this register. So we have two variants of this IP present in our design. One variant, the counter will increment by one whenever you read that register. Another variant, the counter will increment by five whenever you read that register. So basically, if I look at the simplified Vivado design, the, the one we start with, it will contain six IPs, one multiply, one PO, one reciprocal, one LN, one increment by one, and one increment by five. And then we take this Vivado project and we start making modifications so that we can have basically three reconfigurable regions with two IP using each reconfigurable region and then multiply and PO will be present in the hardware. One of them will be present each time in the hardware based on the task we want to do. Again, reciprocal LN, one of them will be present in the hardware every time based on the task we want to do and also true for the count by one or by five. Also, we will add the DFX controller, the ICAP, and the related logic for partial reconfiguration to the design. So let's start. Uh, let's get started with the um, simple Vivado project. So, if you have the uh, deliveries of these videos then you have this folder structure 
and I described to you the folder structure in previous video. Now, in this folder structure, there is this TCL folder. The TCL folder contains these TCL scripts. One of them is create project no partial reconfig equivalent. This is the script we start with right now to create a base Vivado project that doesn't contain any partial reconfiguration. Then we start updating that Vivado project to make it enable or ready for partial reconfiguration. Here in this uh, folder, there are two other projects. Create project, this is the main TCL script which does everything for you. Creates Vivado project with partial reconfiguration, enable and runs the entire flow. And this is basically a script which is needed for part of running the create project TCL script. But for now, I'm starting with this one. Okay, so this is a very simple process. I am calling Vivado with this TCL script that I just mentioned. All right, so let's look at this Vivado design briefly together. I have basically all of the six IPs I mentioned. I have this floating point recipe. It calculates the reciprocal over the stream of double precision numbers it receives here. Then I have the floating point LN. It calculates the natural logarithm. Then I have this um, IP with axi light interface, which increments by one. Basically, whenever I read it, I have the IP axi light interface increments by five whenever I read it. Then I have the IP, which performs a simple multiply by two over the stream of data that it receives here. And then I have the IP, which performs to the power of four over the stream of data that we have here. And our goal, final goal is, I want to have basically this guy and this guy in one reconfigurable region in my design. So these two guys, they will be used interchangeably. Either I will use this one in my design or I will use this one in my design, then this guy and this guy, I want to have either one of them on my design and then this guy and this guy. Again, I want to have one of them on my design. So it, it will never happen that I need both to be present. It always happens that I need only one of them. So now if I look at the design for each of these IPs, which receive the stream of data, I have an XI DMA. There's an XI DMA which reads the memory and feeds the data to this XI stream IP, receives back the result and puts the result back to the memory. So I have one DMA for this IP, another DMA for this IP, then these two are basically IPs with axon 
memory mapped interfaces, they don't need a DMA. CPU can directly access them. And then for each of these two IPs, again, I have a DMA. I have a DMA for to the power of four, another DMA to the for the IP which calculates the multiply by two. Now the point is what I want to do is I want to have like one region one reconfigurable region and in this reconfigurable region either one of these two will be present and then for both of them i will have one single dma basically there's one single dma which feeds the data into this reconfigurable region and receives back the result and also here one of these DMAs need to be present. So I will have like one reconfigurable region. Inside this reconfigurable region, either one of these two IPs will be present. We perform re partial reconfiguration to reconfigure that reconfigurable region with either one of these two IPs. And then I would have a DMA, which basically feeds the data into this reconfigurable region now for these two the actual memory mapped ips i would have one reconfigurable region and then i would have one single actual memory mapped basically interface which talks to the ip inside this reconfigurable region so now In order to, to reach our goal, um, currently with Vivado Design Flow, what we need to do is to have a higher level module above this block diagram. So if, if, you, if you take this design, and if you say this is my final design and I want to all, to have all of the IPs present, then um, this block design would be your top level module, basically. So I, I come here, I create HDR wrapper and this HDR wrapper that I create here, this is gonna be my top level design. And that's it. I go through the synthesis, place and route. But if you want to use partial reconfiguration flow, then you need another higher level module above this block diagram. What will happen is you need a top level module. And this block design, your block design will be part of this top level module. And you need to create wrappers for each of the reconfigurable regions. Basically, I will need to move these guys out of the block design. I will need to have a top level Verilog or VHGL code. And I will need to instantiate wrappers for each of the reconfigurable regions inside my top level Verilog or VHDL code. Also there, I will instantiate the ICAP. So we need to move these guys outside the Vivado design. Basically they will get deleted here and they get instantiated in our top level Verilog code. So here inside the package I have, uh, I'm delivering with these series of videos, there is this RTL folder. Inside the RTL folder, you have the top.v and I'm using, uh, I'm using Verilog because I, I, I like Verilog much more than VHDL. I code in both, but Verilog, I, I'm sorry, but I like it much more. So. This is the top level Verilog code. And as you see, I have instantiation for ICAP, and then I would have instantiation for basically 
each of the reconfigurable regions that I have. And then at the end of the file, I have the instantiation of the block design. So what was needed to be done here is I, I show you an example. Basically these modules, they get deleted out of the block design because they get instantiated inside our top level, for example, here. So these guys, they get deleted. And as I described to you, basically one of these DMAs is enough to be present in the system. So the other DMA gets deleted and I have one DMA which feeds the data to the reconfigurable module that I want. So these interfaces here, the interface that feeds the data to, to the reconfigurable region. This basically becomes an external interface of the block diagram. The same is true also for this interface that we have here, which, which receives back the results of the processing. So this guy, becomes an external interface and also this guy becomes an external interface. So for the block diagram and then in top level, which sits above this block diagram, we have instantiation of this block design and the instantiation of the block design contains all of these interfaces. And then we connect these interfaces to our wrappers that we have created for each of the reconfigurable regions. Now, there's one important point before I continue. If the output of this interface is going to a reconfigurable region, then, and then if from the reconfigurable region, there would be signals uh, or a stream of data entering this DMA, then it's a very good idea. If I decouple that region from this DMA while the partial reconfiguration is happening, so basically in our block design, I have the DMA here. The DMA feeds the data into IP wrapper and receives back the result. Now, while I'm reconfiguring this area inside the IP wrapper, then I want those signals during reconfiguration, I want this link to not to be active. Basically, I don't want any signal to be received by the DMA or to be sent by the DMA during reconfiguration. Why? Because uh, I don't know the status of logic during reconfiguration. I want to be sure that nothing strange happens to the inputs, for example, of the actual DMA while the reconfiguration is happening here. The same is true for the rest of the IPs, also for our memory mapped IP. So whenever we are doing this reconfiguration task for this region, I want to decouple these two areas. My static logic, which is residing here, and this reconfigurable region, I don't want the signals to travel between these two regions. So what I need to do in my, and what I do in my Vivado design is I use the DFX decoupler. I use a, DF, a DFX decoupler and then I configure it. And I tell him, hey, I have a XI stream interface and I, I need you to basically decouple these two XI stream interfaces while partial reconfiguration is happening. Now, I have one 
Axi stream interface for the flow of data from the DMA to my reconfigurable region. And I need another Axi interface for the flow of data from my reconfigurable region to the DMA. So basically inside the DFX decoupler, I need two interfaces. The first interface that I have here, this is basically for flow of data from DMA to reconfigurable region. And then I need another one from reconfigurable region to DMA. And this one is also actually a stream interface. So I need these two guys. And then from my DMA, I come here. And from here, I go basically define the interface port. And I go to basically the top level Verilog code to top level uh, Verilog or VHL code. And then from the top level Verilog or VHL code through an interface, I come here to, to this uh, decoupler. So this is the this is the line. I'll come to the decoupler, and then from the output here, I come to my DMA. This is how I decouple this guy, the static logic, from the reconfigurable region. Now the same idea holds true for my XI memory mapped interface. Basically, for the XI memory mapped interface, what should happen, again, these two should go away. They, they will be instantiated inside my Verilog code, my Verilog top level code. So I delete both of them. Now, this interface here, this was the interface which was connected to my uh, actual memory mapped IP. This interface basically should become an external interface. This interface should become an external interface. Again, the same idea for decoupling holds true. So I need here a DFX decoupler. And this time the difference is for, for the decoupler, for the interface options, the type of the interface that I have is no more XI stream, but it's XI memory mapped. So I have an XI memory mapped interface. And from this basically interconnect, I'm coming to the XI memory mapped interface. And on the other side, I'm creating interface port to the XI memory mapped IP that I have in my Verilog code. And now in the interconnect, the other interface won't be used. Basically, it should be deleted. We don't use it because one single Axon memory mapped interface will go to that reconfigurable region that contains our Axon memory mapped IPs. And then we reconfigure that region whenever we need each of the IPs. And then for, for the third one, again, the same story holds true. So these two will be deleted from here, basically. One of the DMAs will be deleted. And then the same as this one, we would, we would have a decoupler here, and then we would have external interface, which goes to the Verilog code, another external interface, which comes from the Verilog code. Now, let's look at the decoupler. The decoupler has this decoupled signal. Whenever I want to do the partial reconfiguration, I should give a command, like I should tell him decouple, and then I should wait for the decouple status and check decouple status, make sure the decoupling has happened, then I can start recon reconfiguration of that region. So, I should drive the decoupled somehow. 
if I want to have a pure software based approach to partial reconfiguration, then how I can drive the decouple? I can have a simple GPIO, XI GPIO, and then this XI GPIO can basically have one output, single bit output, one single bit input, and then I can use this master to to make the connections that I want to the DFX decoupler. So I can have these two. This guy comes here. This guy comes here. And then this guy will be accessed by the CPU. So simply I connect it to my C my uh, basically the interconnect and from there we are going to our zinc and this guy through this interconnect can talk to this GPIO can enable the decouple signal can check the couple status and then uh, after that he can start the reconfiguration through the PCAP this is the scenario in which we are using PCAP we are not using the ICAP. We are not using the DFX controller. Everything is being done through software. Now, one more important point is as you move your basically accelerators, your IPs outside this block design, then you need to also feed them with reset and with clock. So the clock that we are using here, this should also appear as a port to our um, reconfigurable blocks. To the very log code that we are instantiating our reconfigurable blocks. And if they are using different clocks, then each of those clocks should be also given to them. The same is true for reset. And for reset, usually what I do is I drive the reset also through a GPIO. If this is a pure software process, if I'm not using the, uh, P the DFX controller, and if I want to do everything through software, then I would have another GPIO. which basically drives the reset line for each of the configurable regions that I have in, inside the design. So for example, I have three reconfigurable regions in my design, and then the output of this GPIO will go to the top level Verilog code to and each bit will be used for resetting each of the reconfigurable regions. And then this guy will be purely controlled by the software. Now, whenever I want to reconfigure each of those regions, I would enable the reset, I would perform my reconfiguration. After the reconfiguration is fully done, I would disable the reset. So whenever I want to reconfigure each of those regions, I would enable the reset, I would decouple that region, I would perform reconfiguration. After reconfiguration is done, I would bring down the reset and then I disable the decoupling. And this, this can be done purely through software with these GPIOs and then with the PCAP. And then in the software code later, I will show you how this is done, the software example. But if we are using the DFX controller, so if I want to use the DFX controller,
for reconfiguring my reconfigurable regions, then the DFX controller is capable of producing all of the signal, all of these signals himself. So the DFX controller can enable the decouple. Basically, the this decouple is a signal which comes here. It can produce the reset, and this is basically the reset which goes to the reconfigurable region. And furthermore, it can also produce a start up and shut down signals. And that's for modules that you should tell them, hey, I want to shut down you, so do your final tasks. Or a module that after a reset, you want to tell him, hey, start up, I want to use you. So the DFX controller is capable of basically producing all of these signals as well. So if I want to use both of the approaches, I want to be able to basically reconfigure through PCAP, soft, pure software flow, or I want also to be able to reconfigure with ICAP and DFX controller, then, then an idea can be, um, for example, for this decoupled board that I have here, the decouple can be driven by, by either this guy or this guy. So I would have um, utility vector logic, and this is going to be a, a OR operation. And then what I will have is from this guy, I come here, and from the decouple, I come here, and I, I have to describe the DFX controller in further detail in the next video. And then from the output of this OR, we come here. Or for the reset that we have here, the reset that we are sending to the reconfigurable block, what will happen is I would have a AND gate. And the AND gate will be driven, and reset is usually active low. So I would have an AND gate, and the AND gate will be driven either by this reset here in the fix controller, or this reset in the actual GPIO. Then I would be able to basically do the reconfiguration through either software using these GPIOs and the PCAP or this DFX controller. One final important point before we finish this video, when I add the DFX controller, it has this ICAP interface. This ICAP interface also becomes an interface for my block diagram. And then in my top level module, in the very low code, I instantiate the ICAP. And then this memory mapped XI interface that we have here, it is needed to get connected somehow to the DRAM controller. So basically in our case, it, it will get connected to our Zinc PS. So this guy needs to be able to access the DRAM and DRAM is where the partial beta streams are located. So this guy, as you see, is connected to HP port of our Zinc PS. In the next video, I will describe the DFX controller further. And then we look together at the finished Vivado design. Again, if you have the scripts, then finished Vivado design can be simply produced by running this create project TCL script here. Thanks for watching this video. In the next video, we continue with the Vivado design. Bye.